you, Natalie. I'm so sorry. I, I, I remembered to make your video and then I forgot. And, and then, I, then I remembered again. Um, so anyway, you might be able to practice a little bit. Um, you have raised a really interesting question in your text about how to go from the lead to go to the rhythm. And it's a, it's a super difficult thing to do. And um, it, it's not a straightforward answer how to do it, but there are things you can start to think about. And it takes quite a while to sort of develop those instincts, right? But imagine, I mean, what I'm not sure about is if you're gonna be using your fingers or a pick to be doing that bit. So let's imagine you're using a pick, right? Uh, yeah, you're sort of strong in this. In an octopus's garden, you shine. That kind of thing, right? So what I generally do is I try and keep this hand kind of going. This is, this is for fingers or pick, right? If I was doing, Fingers would be the same thing. In an octopus's garden in the shade. I'd ask my friends. I know I've got a few extra little bits there that maybe I didn't show you, but the principle is the same. And what I try and do is keep the rhythm going, just doing something bogus here. So, see how I stuff that up? Stuff it up again. So I went down. Keep going. So I'm doing this little, it's almost like a crossfade. Think of it like, I'll do it without that and we'll see how it sounds. In an octopus's garden, me. We would be warm. Going from chords to picking sounds kind of weird. Or, rest in our head on the seabed. Rest in our head. I didn't do it that well because I tried to overdo it. But. Rest in our head on the seabed. No, no, see that? So it's particularly going into the chords again after the lead. It's even more important than going into the lead. So, rest in our head. On the seabed, in an octopus's garden, in the shame. That's the best thing I can tell you. Usually, when, actually, when I'm going into the lead, I'm usually just doing one in this song. I just found myself only doing one. Hopefully, that gives you some concept of how to do it. Um, so, if we went... Uh, um, let's see. I'd like to be, I kind of, hopefully that helps you. And sometimes it's a, you hear sound and sometimes you just hear this. It doesn't really matter, but you've just got to be connected. Think of it like if you're chatting to someone, not a bad way of thinking about it is, if you're asking me, you know, what should I do to transition from chord to lead? And I say, to trans transition from chords to lead, try and do something random with your hand. If that doesn't work, Another option. I mean, it sounds weird when I talk like that because when I talk, I'm going, ah, look, maybe, uh, yeah, probably the best thing. I'm going, um, and some words I'm making longer. And there's this kind of strange little interim sounds that I'm putting in as I'm speaking to kind of keep the flow of the speech. It's a really similar concept with this. You're kind of trying to keep that flow. And if you, it's, it, it's, um, sometimes people call these things psychoacoustic because it's kind of bullshit. It just affects your psychology. It just, you're not really doing anything that actually is fantastic. You're just giving the illusion of flow. And psychoacoustic, we kind of, we don't notice the trick being done. We just go, oh yeah, cool, it's all flowing. Well, it's not really, but you're sort of manufacturing the perception of that. So it's psychoacoustic, it's not actually an acoustic phenomena. It's just how our brains, uh, you're tricking the brain. Yeah, sl sleight of hand. Good luck. Merry Christmas.